Hey you guys, it's Peter. And welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And I was running around doing some errands today and I thought, you know what, I have not done a, I did an Audible book vlog on here a couple days ago, um, but I haven't done a drive around car vlog on here. And it's been a long time. So people seem to like those. So I thought, you know what, I've got some things to discuss. I've got some things I'd like to rant about a little bit to do with reading. So why not just take the camera and discuss a few of these things? Okay, first and foremost, let me just say, um, if you're part of Peter's Book Club, we are currently reading Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. Um, and I was actually gonna just do a book review today of Franny, the first half of it, because I finished that and now I'm in Zoe. Um, I feel like I read this a very long time ago, but I don't remember. It was one of my mom's favorite books. My mom loved J.D. Salinger. She loved To Kill a Mockingbird. And the thing is, I loved To Kill a Mockingbird too. But when I tried to reread it a couple years ago, it was so sad and kind of depressing to me that I just was like, you know what? I don't want to read this. Like, it's just, it's so depressing to me. And then I had seen a review that Ariel Bissette did and she talked about it essentially being a young adult book, which is weird because I had never thought of it that way. Um, I think, you know, we think, I, I think I thought of Holden Caulfield as like a young adult, which I mean, it would be young adult then, but you know what I mean? Like, it feels very much more like a book that you read as an adult. I don't know, like as a young person, you know, and like, but like you read it as you get older. Like my mom loved that book even into her 40s and 50s. Now, the last time I tried to read it, it was just very sad to me. Well, Franny and Zoe is very similar to that. Franny and Zoe is just, it's very sad. It's just very melancholy. Um, it's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking, I mean, you know, it's just like, it's this very simple story that has this underlying philosophical kind of question to it about, you know, who are you and who are you in the realm of the world and to other people. And it's all told in 44 pages of the short story, Franny, right? Now, Zoe is different, but it still has some of the same kinds of things. And I talked about this on my vlog the other night, you know, that a lot of the questions that Franny asks are the same about the world are the same kind of questions that Holden Caulfield asks in Catcher on the Rye. This kind of ongoing idea uh, that Salinger had of that people are phonies and you know people are disingenuous and things like that and so it's interesting reading it what I relate to so much is that Franny reminds me a lot of my mom what was interesting reading it and I said this on my vlog as well was that my mom one of her favorite books was The Way of the Pilgrim and uh which I believe is very Christian in, base, in basis. Uh, Franny refers to this book. I mean, this is a big part of Franny is the, the way of the pilgrim. So I'm like, I have the book in my basement. I'm like, you know what? I need to read that book and kind of like find out reference to it. So, but other than it like reminding me of my mom, it, re it has reminded me very much of periods of my life where I very much felt like I just didn't fit in, you know? And I didn't know where I fit. And I knew that like who I was around was not, like it didn't, like I didn't feel like I connected. And I talked about this <clears throat> when I, I went into long detail about this on my vlog. So if you, I have heard both, I apologize. But it's kind of like, you know, where your surroundings don't match your soul, so to speak. And it's like, you're looking around you and like, you know, you're standing. Um, it's like, you know, I could be in the middle of a huge party and feel absolutely alone. Like that's how I feel. And I struggle so much with social anxiety. And I feel like people don't get me a lot. And I've always felt like that. Like that's not a new feeling to me. Like I have felt that way ever since I was a kid. And, um, and in fact, I feel almost more comfortable feeling that way than I do feeling like I fit in. Like when I feel like I fit in, I like that feeling, but it's uncomfortable for me at first. Like I have to get kind of adjusted to it. So I don't know, like I, I have, like the feelings that Franny has in this book, which are of course, you know, exaggerated because of the brevity, it's like so short of the short story, but which was originally uh, published in the New Yorker. But like I really related to it and then it kind of made me sad. It made me like kind of look at my life, you know? So anyway, that's Franny and Zoe. Uh, the live book club is discussion is this upcoming Sunday at uh, I believe 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I, it's linked below on my YouNow channel. And I will also put a notice out on um, my YouTube channel, Peter Likes Books, as well as on Twitter. I'll try to do that. So anyway, the next thing um, that I want to say is that I am 
like really, really enjoying the Harry Potter books, but I am really struggling with them as, as well because they're so incredibly long. And I'm listening to um, Goblet of Fire on uh, by Jim Dale, the Audible narration. Now, I'm reading one a month to try to finish them by January to have the, the seventh book read in, in January. But this month, I was supposed to be reading The Order of the Phoenix, and I'm still on Goblet of Fire, which was last month's book. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just get both of them done this month, which is fine, right? If I stayed off Audible. Because the thing is, is there, there are so many books on Audible that I want to read. And I'm like... I feel like I'm spending a lot of my in the car time listening to Harry Potter, which is fantastic. I like it, but it is so long. I think like Goblet of Fire is like 21 hours and 50 minutes, which the problem with that is that I usually listen to books on like 1.75 or 2 point speed. And I have been doing that with Harry Potter. Like I've been listening to it. I had to like move it down, but sometimes like even if I miss like five minutes, it goes so fast that I have to like rewind it five minutes. And then I'm like, what did I miss? And what did this and what did that? And it's like, because I can't understand sometimes like what they're saying. And so I have to go back and I have to like, you know, re-listen to it. And there's a lot of that that I'm doing. So it's taking me a really long time to listen to it. Um, to what really should be a pretty fast read, you know, because I mean, it's written for children and it's interesting. I love it. Like, I mean, it's very interesting to me. But so anyway, I don't know. I may now have to finish my books in February and be a whole month behind because I don't want to rush to just get these books done because I said I was going to get them done. Which brings me to my next point. I am... Um, so I just, you know, looked, I was at the bank and before I left, because I knew I wanted to do this video, I looked at my Goodreads and my Goodreads goal for last year, I think was 101 books, 100 or 101 books. And I am currently at 41, which means that in the next two months, I have to read 59 books, which we, I think is fair to assume that that's not going to happen. <laughs> And I don't know why every year I get so discouraged by this Goodreads goal. It's like next year, I just want to set a goal of like five books so that I know that I achieved my goal because then I'll just be happy. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm really pushing myself. But this year, I have had more reading slumps than any other year. And like... Like, even now, like, reading Franny and Zoe, which is short, reading a James Patterson, which is short, listening to Harry Potter, like, those are three books that should be really easy, and I find myself when I'm at home just not wanting to pick up a book, and I'm finding myself, like, in the car wanting to listen to Christmas music or wanting to listen to a podcast, like, My Favorite Murder, but I'm not wanting to, like, listen to my audiobook, and this is, it's different, like, I'm not, I don't usually feel that way, and so I'm like, God, I didn't even get anywhere near my goal this year, and last year, I think my goal was 100 as well, and... Yeah, which is why I made this year, I think, 101. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But anyway, I think last year I hit, like, 62 books. Well, that still means if I'm going to hit that this year, that still means I have to finish reading 21 books before the end of the year. And, like, even that I don't think is going to happen unless I go to the library and just read, like, 50 children's books. You know what I mean? And, like, how corny is that? Like, I don't want to do that just to hit that goal, but I'm actually thinking about it. And so, um... Just because I know nobody, nobody else cares, but I do care about that. I don't know. And then I get on Goodreads, and that damn thing, let me just tell you, I sit there, and I look at what everybody else is reading, and then I add it to my want to read, and then I take a picture of it sometimes so I can go to the store and I can look at it and see if it's something that I want. And then I just buy more books, and I'm like, when are you going to actually read this book? And now it's the holiday season, and I want to read some holiday books, but I've got all these other books that I want to finish before the end of the year. And I'm like, oh my God! <laughs> Why did reading become so complicated? And I need to get back to just reading to enjoy reading. Because I miss that, you know? Like, I don't want to have any... Um, I was reading this billboard. It's Mattress Farm. And it says, sleep happy tonight. I sleep happy every night, okay? My bed is comfortable. But anyway... Um, <laughs> I want to get back to just reading because, like, I just love tearing through a book. And I honestly, that's not how I feel right now. Like, I feel like I'm struggling. And part of the problem was, is that I picked for the book club some of the worst books in the world to read. Like, honestly, like, some of the books that, like, if I don't want to read it, I don't know why I assume that anybody else would want to read it. And I kind of try to get myself excited because we were trying to read all different kinds of things. But I think going forward, I was talking to Mel. Hey, Mel! Mel is the book club assistant. I 
love her so much. She is so helpful. Um, the book club honestly would not exist if it wasn't for her. And we were talking and I said, how do you feel about just going off the Goodreads, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, their like list, because right now, you know, they have the Goodreads awards going out and uh, that you can go vote on. So go over and vote on your Goodreads awards. I think like one of the only books that I have on there is um, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, which came out like years ago. But um, the, t the section that you vote on is called uh, Best of the Best. And so they have like 20 books or something on there that have Best of the Best for the last 10 years, I think. of Because I think it's 10, I think it's, I said Audible, Goodreads. I think it's Goodyear's 10 year anniversary. So it's like the best of the best. And um, like a lot of the books on there I've wanted to read and I've never read. So I was saying to her, like, why don't we pick like for the next six months, like books off that list or books off of this, you know, the list that just came out. That way, okay, that best of the best, most of those books are a couple years old. People can get them at the library. People can get them online. People can get them on Kindle or on Audible. And then it doesn't have to be like, I have to rush out and be on a waiting list of 500 people at the library. You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to do that. But I want to pick books that like a lot of people liked because then the chances are that I'll like them as well. Because I've struggled with a lot of those book club books. If you're in my book club, have you struggled with them? Some of them are just, they're not that good. And then some of them are really good, but I'd like to get really excited about whatever I'm reading. Oh, by the way, if you didn't watch my Audible book vlog, we read in the book club last spring, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, about the Golden State Killer. There is a new book on Audible out, um, and it was partly written by Paul Holes, a de detective, and it's like what you don't know about the Golden State Killer investigation, and it's a new Audible book that just came out. I don't know if it's a book book as well, but it's on Audible, so you can go get it. Um, it's very cool. Oh, they just put all the Christmas lights up over there on the Christmas trees in the shopping area. It's so pretty. So anyway, I just wanted to get on here and do a little book vlog and talk about that. I also would love to know some book recommendations for the holiday season, if you guys have any. Um, I'm going to read The Box of Delights. I'm going to read... Um, oh, I had another one picked out. No, I don't remember what it was. So let me know in the comment section below what you think are some good holiday books to read. I don't care what age range they're in. I just want to read some adult ones, some children's ones. I want to read a lot of holiday books. Last year I read a lot so of holiday books. So this year I'm going to have to uh, find some new ones. But I'm ready to start that as of next week. Oh, I'm going to read Let It Snow um, by John Green. If you are in the book club, I can tell you that Mel and I will be talking before this Sunday and we will have the new list of books up because we're going forward, we're going to change the books. Um, we had mentioned that in the last live stream and I know a lot of people wanted to know about that because we're going to read books that people really want to read instead of reading books that people don't want to read. I mean, why would you be in a book club and read something you don't want to read, right? <laughs> So anyway, okay, I'm going to get off here now. I hope you guys are excited for Thanksgiving and you're getting prepared. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.